Hey there, Papper people. It is me, Jason, the Lanky Lefty 27. I am super excited to be doing this video today. It is gonna be on comparing a type two home sleep test, specifically mine, with a sleep tracker, specifically the Apple Watch. Now I have a business called AXG Sleep Diagnostics where I do consultations with people using programs such as Oscar. I also have a type two home sleep study. I finally have the perfect data set to compare these. I had two people using my type two study that also had an Apple watch on and shared their data with me. I asked them if I can go ahead and share it with you and they were all for it. I've done videos on this in the past, but I've never had data to actually back it up. Do me a favor, if you like this kind of content, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you care to do so, and then share it with all your friends in the most annoying way possible. This is my website and this is a type two study that we're talking about. Now, when you're hooking yourself up, you're gonna have electrodes on your forehead, all over your face, all over your chest, your legs, your body positioning, uh, nasal cannula, blood oxygen levels, uh, respiratory effort belts. You have electrodes on your legs. This is a full on sleep study. Let's take a look at what that data looks like. There's a lot of nuance involved in this. So we have accurate sleep staging. This is kind of pulled out, it's a two minute window, but you can see there's a lot of detail here. We have you know, the chin, we have the eyes, we have the EEG, which is your brain activity. We have snoring, your legs, we have the breathing. This is the cannulates in your nose. So then these are the belts that are on the waist. We also have heart rate and rhythm as well as blood oxygen concentration levels. But if we look over here, this is a kind of thing, the detail you don't get out of sleep trackers. I'll be showing that in just a minute, but this, I can't compare this with sleep trackers. So we have subtle breathing event here, which is a respiratory effort related arousal. And then we have a micro arousal here. You can see the EEG really speeds up, gets large. And anyone can kind of see that there's a, a, a change between all of this and then this section right here and then back to sleep. I think that's pretty obvious. So we also have this kind of staging, right? So stage one, then here we have a segment of stage three. This is delta sleep, slow wave sleep, deep sleep if you're comparing it to a sleep tracker. The waves are large, They're, the waves are super large, the waves are super slow. It's called N3 sleep, used to just be called three sleep. I don't know why they changed it, it's kind of stupid. And then here we have a segment of REM sleep, otherwise known as rapid eye movements is when you're dreaming. You can see the waves look a certain way. We have, again, some more detail here. We have an arousal, a micro arousal from that, this severe hypopnea, blood oxygen desaturation. Then we have REM here from another person. Again, same kind of thing, big, massive hypopneas, but you can really see the clear rapid eye movement and then the chin really dropping off. Makes it very easy to see REM versus non-REM versus stage three. It's easy to see, it is not hard to miss. Staging a sleep study is super easy. So all of this information, comes from all of this equipment. Now, if we compare it to a sleep tracker, we have all these different things that you could use, a Fitbit, you have these WellU rings, we have GoTo Sleep, we have the Whoop 4.0, the Muse 2. The list goes on and on. There's not a shortage of these. One of the most popular ones is the Aura Ring, where we have right here, Gen 3, 300 bucks. We have some expensive equipment here, but really what it all boils down to is, some guy standing there saying, I'm wearing a watch. That's about all the detail you get. Oh, excuse me, Jocelyn. Before you get too far into this, you should probably uh, do something with your sponsor. Uh, yes, let's do something with my sponsor. Guys, February is about to end. We all know discount code LOVELANKY is about to expire at the end of the month. Now, if you would like to use discount code LOVELANKY, you can actually use that right this second and buy yourself a slick mask such as the Fisher and Paykel Bravita mask. Use discount code LOVELANKY and that saves you 25% plus you get 100 loyalty reward program points. That equates to $5 off your order in addition to the 25% off. But you only have until February 29th before that expires. Then you're gonna have to use a totally different discount code. And that is Lucky Lanky. Still a phenomenal discount, but only 20% off with a hundred loyalty reward. Do yourself a favor and use discount code LOVELANKY. Save 25% off 100 loyalty reward program points, or you could procrastinate. And in the month of March, use discount code LUCKYLANKY, saving 20% off with 100 loyalty reward program points. Check out the sponsor of this video, CPAPsupplies.com. I'm gonna to try to present this information as clean as I can. I don't want you to be swayed one way or the other. I really don't care if you have a sleep tracker, if it's near and dear to you and it's important to you, it doesn't bother me at all. But as someone who works in the field of sleep and sleep disorders and, and especially sleep diagnostics, 
I am very particular about the accuracy of tests. Oftentimes when someone is doing a pap therapy analysis with me, they show me their sleep tracker data and to me it's, it's worthless. And so they say, well, it's better than nothing. Is it? Jocelyn, you sound like you have a, an opinion on this. I do have an opinion on this. I think it's a waste of money and oftentimes I think no data is better than inaccurate data or misleading data. Jocelyn, seems like you think the data is a little misleading. I do think it's a little misleading and I'm gonna show you why. Now I try to put the data side by side in this. This is just actually my editing software. It made it easy to kind of move around and stretch and do things like that to the data. But ultimately we have this, this is a sleep tracker image and then underneath it I have the sleep diagnostic data. I'm gonna take these and overlay them. So really we're just gonna be looking at this, what we call a hypnogram. This is also a hypnogram. And these come from my diagnostic test, which is just simply that one page. My sleep report is much more robust than this, but this is the only thing, the only metric I have to compare to it. What's gonna make it more confusing, unfortunately, is that the colors, the color codes don't quite line up. So let's go ahead and take a look at the first person. I have two data sets. Now the top one here is my home sleep test. The bottom one here is the sleep tracker, the Apple Watch. So let's actually try to make these a little bit bigger. I hope you appreciate this, I really did. I'm trying to make these line up as close as I can. I want this to be as accurate as possible. So let's see what we can do. First, a few things for the top one. Yellow is awake. The red here is REM sleep. This kind of teal colored is stage two sleep. And this dark blue color is stage three sleep. Now we have to compare it to red over here is awake. Then we have this lighter blue color is REM. Then we have this core sleep, otherwise known as stage two sleep, is kind of the more true blue color. And then matching, thank God, is a dark blue is for their deep sleep or stage three. Now you can, I try to line these up as close as I can. I think I did a pretty good job. His, his watch shut off over here, but let's try to compare the two. So starting off, it says core sleep when I still had them awake, but it transitions pretty well. Stage two, stage three, they're pretty close. Now I have several awakenings and this is the main thing I see is the watches really miss the micro arousals. They don't see them at all, like not even close. We have some more stage two sleep, otherwise known as core sleep, and they seem to track pretty decent. This REM period looks pretty decent. It's, it's just about right. But then over here we have periods of clearly wake sleep when I was scoring this record. I had to go back and double check. This is definitely wake. In fact, much of it is upright. He was having a hard time sleeping with the equipment on. And right here you can see there's, there are long periods of wake, but there's also these huge periods of what they're calling stage two sleep. This is a massive mistake in my, in my opinion. Okay, we, moving along back over here, they called this REM sleep. Definitely not REM sleep at that point. This is all stage two sleep. Then pretty much as soon as their REM sleep ends, the actual REM sleep begins. Again, not difficult to see on a sleep study. We have some stage two sleep, which tracks along you know, pretty well. And then over here they have awake when I definitely still had them as being asleep. Okay, let's look at the second patient. I kind of feel like this one was a bomb. I don't feel like the sleep tracker the Apple Watch was really all that accurate. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and increase the size of some of these. I already lined these up about as close as I could. Hopefully they're big enough to see. We have the same things. I had to stretch it out though. So REM is still red, all that's still the same. Okay, so we have core sleep here. Looks more or less pretty good than Delta sleep. We're both kind of in that same range there. So REM sleep on the sleep tracker, they just have like a really, really small period there for the Apple Watch. Whereas, and it's right when I have it as ending, so that's a pretty big miss. And then we have stage two, Delta, pretty much taking up this entire space. I have quite a bit more Delta scored than, than they have, but more or less, it's not too shabby. Then we have REM sleep. REM starting pretty much right on time. I have it going much longer, but they end, but pretty close, not too bad. Then we have again, stage two, stage three. Seems to track along really pretty decent. I mean, I think our Delta's off just a little bit, but you know, not a huge deal breaker there. The Apple Watch has several awakenings uh, kind of spattered about. Um, the important part here though is uh, REM. So REM seems to be off pretty consistently with the exception of this one. So they have REM starting much, much earlier. And then right there, mine starts, there's kind of ends just right after that. Then at the very, very end, I have that there was a brief REM period right at the end, whereas it shows on the sleep tracker, he was awake. Now, I'm curious what you guys think about this. 
try to line these up as best I can, but is that good enough? Is there enough information in there for you? There's no data on respiratory. It's really just all about sleep stages. You can easily have 10 to 20 to 30 awakenings per night not caused by respiratory events that aren't captured on the tracker, but they are captured in a sleep study. So the question is, is it really important for you to have a sleep tracker? And what I mean by this is, what are you gonna do about it if you're not having a lot of stage three sleep? No, no delta sleep, no slow wave sleep. What are you gonna do about it? Now, what if you don't have REM sleep? What are you gonna do about it? There's not much you can do about it. And I would say with the exception of something like CPAP, treating your sleep apnea, if that is in fact what's going on, that's gonna consolidate sleep, that's gonna produce whatever sleep stage is going to naturally occur with you, but you can't force a sleep stage to occur. Oh, this goes much awesome. What about drugs? That's true. Drugs can make a big difference in what stages of sleep you get. That's not for this video though. Let me know in the comment section if you want me to do a video on pharmaceuticals and their effect on sleep. I'd be happy to do that, but it's not for this video. Let me know what you think of this. What do you think about the sleep tracker? What do you think about it compared with the type two study? And let me know if you have one, if you think it's a useful tool and let me know why you think it's a useful tool. And also if you have one and you think it's a, it was a complete waste of money, let me know that in the comments section as well. Thank you so much for watching this video as long as you have. I could geek out on this stuff all day long. I love data. I just like the data to be useful, relevant, and especially accurate when it comes to sleep diagnostics. If it doesn't, to me, it's just a toy and it's just a waste of money. With that, have a great night. Bye. Clean your stinky mask with some mask right available at Amazon. Thank you to all watching, but an extra thick Thanks, butter, to Doug Toombs, Jason Georgiades, Patricia Espelong, Sarvesh Joshi, Stuart Hetherington, Mona Swaringen, Chung Tu Chen, Edward Steiner, Deborah Permute, and Shannon Kerr, and another slightly less thick thanks, buddy, to all the other YouTube members, Patreon supporters.